Start with Antiphon again. We'll be on, uh, yeah, we'll be on 1377. Okay. Starting with this one. Wait, we're not going to go back and fix the. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> the people in your subscribers are going to go, have that Matt guy on anymore. <laughs> okay. So, you got the Antiphon? Good. Well, good morning and welcome to Matins in the Morning. Merry Christmas. It is Thursday, December 28th. We are not only celebrating the octave of Christmas, but we are also celebrating the Feast of the Holy Innocents. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Matt, and we're coming to you from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer, where it is our mission to pray and promote the Liturgy of the Hours. You can find out more about us over at liturgyofthehours.org. I'm going to take you through our page numbers this morning. Uh, you can find all of this information uh, just below the video in the details uh, but we are in Volume 1 still of the Liturgy of the Hours 4-Volume Prayer Book. We have uh, a little bit of page flipping to do today, uh, but um, we're going to begin with the uh, the Feast of the Holy Innocents. Uh, it's a pro uh, proper feast here on, on page 1272, and we're going to have our antiphons there along with our readings, responsories, and concluding prayer. Uh, what you'll need to do uh, is... We'll have the antiphons there on 1272, uh, but for the Psalms, you have to flip to the Common of Martyrs. And so the Psalms will begin on page 1376. So we'll be turning back uh, between the antiphons and the Psalms. And then um, before our concluding prayer, uh, after the readings and responsories, uh, we'll turn to page 651, where we'll pray the Te Deum. Uh, we pray the Te Deum uh, every day throughout the octave of Christmas. Uh, and our opening hymn uh, this morning will be Joy to the World. We'll sing the first two verses. Uh, you can find, if you'd like to find uh, the music for the hymn, you can find that over at liturgyofthehours.org slash Christmas hymns. So we'll begin as we always do with our prayer in preparation for the divine office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open, O Lord, my mouth, to bless your holy name. Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my understanding, and kindle my affections, that I may worthily, attentively, and devoutly say this office, and so deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in union with that divine intention with which you praise God while you are on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King, let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns, let men their songs employ, While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. And we'll begin with our first antiphon on page 1272, a reminder that we'll be flipping to uh, the Common of Martyrs beginning on 1376 uh, for our psalms. Lord, these little ones praise you and skip with joy like lambs, for you have set them free. Why this tumult among nations, among peoples this useless murmuring? They arise, the kings of the earth, Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. 
Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I shall bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. With a rod of iron you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe and trembling. Pay him your homage, lest he be angry and you perish, for suddenly his anger will blaze. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, these little ones praise you, and skip with joy like lambs, for you have set them free. These are the first of mankind to be one for God and the Lamb. Innocent they stand before the throne of God. These are the first of mankind to be one for God and the Lamb. Innocent they stand before the throne of God. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the lyre. With a ten-stringed harp, sing him songs. O sing him a song that is new. Play loudly with all your skill. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. By his word the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all the stars. He collects the waves of the ocean, he stores up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord, all who live in the world revere him. He spoke and it came to be, he commanded it sprang into being. He frustrates the designs of the nations, he defeats the plans of the peoples. His own designs shall stand forever, the plans of his heart from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the first of mankind to be one for God and the Lamb. Innocent they stand before the throne of God. Joy and everlasting gladness will be their lot. They will never again know sorrow and pain. They are happy whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. From the heavens the Lord looks forth, he sees all the children of men. From the place where he dwells he gazes on all the dwellers of the earth, he who shapes the hearts of them all and considers all their deeds. A king is not saved by his army, nor a warrior preserved by his strength. A vain hope for safety is the horse, despite its power it cannot save. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. In him do our hearts find joy. We trust in his holy name. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Joy and everlasting gladness will be their lot. They will never again know sorrow and pain. These holy ones sang a new song before the throne of God and the Lamb. Earth resounds with the echo of their song. From the book of Exodus. A new king who knew nothing of Joseph came to power in Egypt. He said to his subjects, Look how numerous and powerful the Israelite people are growing more so than we ourselves. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them to stop their increase. Otherwise, in time of war, they too may join our enemies to fight against us, and so leave our country. Accordingly, taskmasters were set over the Israelites to press them with forced labor. Thus they had to build for Pharaoh the supply cities of Pithom and Ramses. Yet the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. The Egyptians then dreaded the Israelites and reduced them to cruel slavery, making life bitter for them with hard work and mortar and brick and all kinds of fieldwork, the whole cruel fate of slaves. 
The king of Egypt told the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was called Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives for the Hebrew women and see them giving birth, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it is a girl, she may live. Pharaoh then commanded all his subjects, throw into the river every boy that is born to the Hebrews, but you may let all the girls live. I will take delight in my people. Never again will weeping and crying be heard among them. Death shall be no more. Grief, tears, and sorrow will be forgotten. For behold, I make all things new. Never again will weeping and crying be heard among them. From a sermon by St. Quadvoltius, Bishop. <clears throat> a tiny child is born who is a great king. Wise men are led to him from afar. They come to adore one who lies in a manger and yet reigns in heaven and on earth. When they tell of one who is born a king, Herod is disturbed. To save his kingdom, he resolves to kill him, though if he would have faith in the child, he himself would reign in peace in this life and forever in the life to come. Why are you afraid, Herod, when you hear of the birth of a king? He does not come to drive you out, but to conquer the devil. But because you do not understand this, you are disturbed and in rage. And to destroy one child whom you seek, you show your cruelty in the death of so many children. You are not restrained by the love of weeping mothers or fathers mourning the deaths of their sons, nor by the cries and sobs of the children. You destroy those who are tiny in body, because fear is destroying your heart. You imagine that if you accomplish your desire, you can prolong your own life, though you are seeking to kill life himself. Yet your throne is threatened by the source of grace, so small, yet so great, who is lying in the manger. He is using you, all unaware of it, to work out his own purposes, freeing souls from captivity to the devil. He has taken up the sons of the enemy into the ranks of God's adopted children. The children die for Christ, though they do not know it. The parents mourn for the death of martyrs. The child makes of those as yet unable to speak fit witnesses to himself. See the kind of kingdom that is his, coming as he did in order to be this kind of king. See how the deliverer is already working deliverance, the Savior already working salvation. But you, Herod, do not know this and are disturbed and furious. While you vent your fury against the child, you are already paying him homage and do not know it. How great a gift of grace is here! To what merits of their own do the children owe this kind of victory? They cannot speak, yet they bear witness to Christ. They cannot use their limbs to engage in battle, yet already they bear off the palm of victory. They worshipped him who lives forever and ever. They laid their crowns before the throne of the Lord their God. They fell on their, knee, they fell on their faces before his throne and gave praise to him who lives forever and ever. They laid their crowns before the throne of the Lord their God. We'll now pray the Te Deum, which can be found in the Ordinary on page 651. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, 
and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. And for our concluding prayer, turn to page 1277. All right. Let us pray. Father, the holy innocents offered you praise by the death they suffered for Christ. May our lives bear witness to the faith we profess with our lips. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. And we'll now conclude, as we always do, with our prayer that follows the praying of the divine office to the most holy and undivided trinity to the humanity of our lord jesus christ crucified to the fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious mary ever virgin and to the whole company of the saints be everlasting praise honor and glory by all creatures and to us remission of all our sins world without end amen blessed be the womb of the virgin mary which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed be the breast which nourished Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us for Matins in the Morning on this fourth day in the octave of Christmas, this Feast of the Holy Innocents. Thanks for praying with me, Matt. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, for another uh, edition of Matins in the Morning. Uh, we'll be praying for uh, December 29th, uh, the fifth day in the octave of Christmas. Uh, so I hope you're all having a wonderful Christmas celebration. And uh, thanks again for joining us. We'll, we'll look forward to praying with you again tomorrow. God bless.